iOS 17 will completely change the way that you communicate on your iPhone, and in this video, I'm gonna tell you why. Not long after the iPhone 15 announcement next week, iOS 17 will roll out to all iPhones going all the way back to the iPhone XR. That does mean that if you've been hanging on to an older phone like an iPhone 10 or an iPhone 8, you're no longer gonna be getting updates this year. This is going to be a very feature-rich year for iOS, so in this video, I'll show you all the features that you can expect to get, and I'll also show you how you can install the public beta to get all those features before everyone else. Starting with iOS 17, you can now set a full screen image to become the poster for a person's contact. So when they call you, that image will fill the screen. You can even change the font and weight of the text just like you can on your lock screen. But the best part is when you make your own poster, it'll automatically update on all your contacts phones. So when you call them, you get to control the way that you're presented to them. It's honestly a really refreshing update for the calling experience, but that's not the only new feature. They've also added a brand new feature called live voicemail, which automatically transcribes the message that someone's leaving. So you can read what they're saying as they're leaving the message. And if it's important enough, you can just pick up. This only happens if you tap the voicemail button as they're calling you. Otherwise, if you just ignore the call, it'll just leave a message like normal and you can go listen to it afterwards. FaceTime is also getting voicemail now so if someone facetimes you and you miss the call they can leave you a video to let you know what they were calling about iMessage is also getting some quality of life updates so now instead of holding down on a message to reply you can just swipe over just like you can on instagram and instantly open a reply message they also added this little arrow so you can skip straight up to the message you last read in a group chat any audio message that's sent to you will now be transcribed as well. So if you're busy, you don't have to wait to be able to listen to it later. You can just read what they said and reply. You can also now create your own stickers from any photo. And if it's a live photo, it'll be a GIF. And they've also made location sharing inside of messages way easier to use. There's also a new feature called check-ins. So now your loved ones can check in with you if you haven't come home or if you're late. And if they don't check in with you, it'll send you their battery and their location and some other information to help you keep up with where they are. They've also moved all the applets that were inside of iMessage into this little pop-up menu, which does allow more screen real estate to see more messages, but it also means you have to tap twice to get to most things. But pro tip, if you just long press it, it'll go straight to your photos, so for me it's a win. This next one is probably my favorite update they've added this year. AirDrop has pretty much not changed since the day it came out in 2011, which was the year of the iPhone 4S. So this year, it's getting the first ever update that actually changes the way you use AirDrop. So now if two iPhones have iOS 17, you can just tap them together and it'll automatically share the contacts between the two. And with the new contact posters and the fresh animation, it just looks really clean. But it also works for any other AirDrop. So if you have a photo open and you tap your phone to someone's, it'll let you just share the photo. Or if you have a link open in Safari, you just tap it with someone's phone, it'll share the link. But now, finally, you can also now leave AirDrop range mid-transfer and it'll just continue to send over the cloud. You can also automatically start SharePlay sessions with people just by tapping your phones together. Apple also did a great job of adding some quality of life improvements this year. Like now your keyboard will system-wide have autocomplete just like Google. And also now you can just say Siri instead of Hey Siri. And she'll also remember the conversation. So you don't have to keep saying Siri for every question you have. You can just keep talking like a normal conversation. All right, the last thing they've added to iOS 17 is my other favorite feature they've added, which is standby. Standby will activate anytime your phone is charging, locked, and resting in a landscape orientation. When that happens, you get this brand new full screen experience that gives you glanceable information and just looks incredible. You can have any third party widgets you want or something like a clock or the calendar, any photo album you want, or even a world clock to let you keep up with your friends in other time zones. It also uses the ambient light sensor to adapt to low light. So now it'll turn this dark red whenever the lights are off in your room, which I thought would look kind of weird, but after using it, it's actually really, really easy on the eyes. iPad OS 17 is also getting a bunch of new improvements as well. Like now home screen widgets can actually be interactable, so now you can actually check off reminders straight from the widget. They've also added widgets to the lock screen in this really elegant way that's super useful. iPad OS can also now detect text fields in any PDF and just let you autofill your information or type things into the blanks. And now, finally, you can keep track of multiple timers on your lock screen. We truly we live, live in an age, age of wonders. The latest version of macOS is called macOS Sonoma, and it includes a bunch of new features like widgets on the desktop, which will actually fade into the background and change color to blend in. They also added a bunch of new screensavers, like these slow-mo landscape videos, which will actually slow down and settle into the screen as you unlock the Mac. It looks so good. There's also a video presenter overlay, which lets you share your screen dynamically behind you in any conferencing app. We'll also be getting multiple profiles in Safari, and the ability to use any website like it's an app by adding it as a web app on the desktop. And they also added 
added way better game porting for Metal to make it a lot easier for game developers to make their stuff available on macOS. Oh, and you can also FaceTime on your Apple TV now, so there's that. Now, if you want to get ahead of the curve and get all those features before everyone else, Apple has made it easier than ever this year. All you have to do is go to the Apple Beta software website, which I've linked down below, and click Sign Up. Then once you've logged in with your Apple ID and accepted all the terms and conditions, you just click the Get Started button and then enroll your device. Now, before you update, I do usually recommend backing up your device either to iCloud or to a Mac or PC, just in case you want to go back to iOS 16. But after you've enrolled your device, you should be able to just go to Settings, General, Software Update, and you should see this new Beta Updates tab pop up. You click that and then click iOS 17 public beta and then you can just install it like a normal update. And now that little beta option is going to show up on your iPad, on your Apple Watch, and even on your Mac. Now beta versions usually take up a little more storage than a normal update. So if you're just barely scraping by with 64 gigs on your iPhone XR, it's probably best to wait for the final release. And don't forget after you've updated to create your contact posters so people will see you when you call them. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button if you like this video. And if you wanna know how I built this workbench set for less than $200, get subscribed, I'm making a video on it. But that's all for now, I'll see you next time.